Okay. The another thing that you can do is to figure out whether things are working properly or not. So you can do something known as an occlusion experiment. So these are all your uh, debugging tools sort of to say if you are working in vision or computer vision where you are using a convolutional neural network. And this is to gain more insights. Right? Most of you will get away by just taking an off the shelf convolutional neural network, training it on your data, getting some accuracy and reporting it. Right? But for those of you who want to really understand what is happening and how can you improve things further. So this could actually tell you, for example, if you want to compare whether a 5 cross 5 filter would have been better than a 7 cross 7 filter. Then you could have observed what these filters are actually learning. And in your data, does it make sense to have a 5 cross 5 filter versus 7 cross 7 filter? Because maybe the 5 cross 5 filters are not being able to distinguish enough. But if you had used a smaller or a larger filter, things would have been different, right? So this is for people who really want to get into the know-how of how things are working. Otherwise, most of you, I don't really expect you to do this. this but this is an important set of tools to have. And I would strongly encourage everyone to experiment with them. And some of this you will do in the assignment, OK? So here's the idea behind occlusion. Uh, experiments. So we are interested in knowing that what patches in the image are actually causing the output to uh, belong to a per particular class. Right? So I have here the figure of a dog and the class being pre predicted as a Pomeranian. And I want to know that what patch of the image actually resulted in this output. Right? So have you tried doing this in any other context? If you want to know if you have several features or several things several factors and you want to decide which actually influenced the output. How would you do it? So what you could do is you could drop one factor, right? And see whether your output would have dr drastically changed. If it goes from positive to negative, then that maybe that was the factor which really mattered, right? So if, if for example, it's a movie class uh, review classification, right? So you drop certain words from your review. So you drop the word amazing, great, and so on, and keep everything else the same. And it's quite likely that your probability of the review still being tagged as a positive review will at least drop. Earlier, maybe with these words, it was getting tagged as a positive review with 0.9 probability. It would come down to 0.6. But now if you drop words like the, and, for, and so on, then you do not expect the output to change much because these words are not really important indicators of positive or negative. Okay? So it's a similar thing that you do here is you occlude certain patch patterns, uh, certain patches of the image. So I have shown one occlusion here. So I've replaced that patch by a gray patch. And I again feed the image to the convolutional neural network. And I see what is the probability of the Pomeranian class right now. Okay? And I do it for all the patches in the image. I can do for as many patches as I want. And I create something known as a heat map. So the red portions here are the ones which do not cause a large drop in the output probability if you occlude them. And the blue portions are the ones which cause a large drop in the output probability if you occlude them. And it's pretty obvious because what is happening is when I cover the face of the dog, the probability drops drastically. And that's what you would expect. And so this is also an indicator that your network has actually learned something meaningful. It is being able to detect this based on the facial features and not just randomly guessing that this is a dog. Right? And see the similar experiments. So for example, if there's a car, Sometimes these results are not very, at least to me, it doesn't look very intuitive. So I would have expected that the wheel would have been one of the deciding factors, right? So if I occlude the wheel, the probability should drop, drop drastically. But the other way of looking at it is that it's really learning a lot of redundant features. So it's not heavily relying on the wheel, unlike in the dog case. Even if the wheel is occluded, it's relying on certain other features which look like cars. And hence, the probability is not dropping drastically. Right? So this allows you to interpret what kind of things it is running. So if it's heavily, for example, for face detection, if it's heavily relying on nose to detect the face, to say that this is a face, then the moment you block the nose, it will drop its probability of detecting this as a face. But that's not good, right? because you want these redundant features. Remember, we had discussed this at some other point, where it should try to detect the face not only from the nose, but also from the ears, from the hair, from the eyes, and so on. So if your occlusion is not drastically reducing your probability, that means it has learned some redundant features which are still allowing it to operate well, even though certain portions of the image are not there. That means it's more robust to noise in that case. Right? And here it looks like it's not so robust because it's probably heavy. This is the rear view mirror of the car. So it's probably heavily relying on that feature to detect a car. Okay? 
then this is another thing where the true label is an Afghan hound and for some reason if you occlude the face of the woman its probability decreases. Now, let us not comment on that, but uh, uh, if you go back and look at the image you might be able to make some observations, right. Uh, so, these are things, so this is an indicator that it is probably not really learnt it well. Maybe all the Afghan hound images that it saw, maybe a woman was carrying the dog always, right. So, it is learned this wrong association that when I see a woman with some object that is the portion which is the dog, which is bad, right. So, now you can see that your network has not learnt something interesting and you would want. So, if you look at one network which is predicting a dog based on this kind of occlusion and another network which is predicting a dog based on this occlusion then you would prefer the other one. Right? So, this is a very interesting experiment to do. So, 